Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us for another session of the WNS Operative Grand Rounds. The following session will be a discussion regarding surgical management of glossopharyngeal neuralgia. Our discussant will be Dr. William Caldwell from the University of Utah. Glossopharyngeal neuralgia is a rare disease, however, surgical treatment is associated with very satisfying results. We therefore thought it would be reasonable to dedicate a session to it. We hope that you'll enjoy the session. Thank you. Bill, thank you again for joining us uh, this afternoon. Um, this is the um, disclosure for the participant, for the participants, none of which interferes with the presentation. Before we start the discussion about glossopharyngeal neuralgia, I think it's uh, useful to present a patient's interview that we have recorded recently. You're going to see her surgical video at the end of the presentation, actually. And this is such a rare pain, and the diagnosis is so important that I think just hearing it from the mouth of the patient is going to be uh, so much better. So let's hear the video of uh, uh, this patient's interview describing her pain in detail. Can you please uh, tell us about your pain? The pain that I experienced was very excruciating. It's the worst pain I've ever felt in my life. And it would start in my throat area, and it would just uh, shoot up into my middle ear and then radiate down my jawline. And it would just, if it lasted very long, I would start coughing and choking because of the saliva. And I never did pass out, but I felt close to it a couple times. Uh, the pain could be triggered by lots of different things, sometimes coughing, sneezing, yawning, cold drinks. Uh, food never seemed to do it as much as drinks. Uh, sometimes if I raised my voice, um, I could get uh, uh, pain. And sometimes it just happened for nothing. It just would happen on its own. And um, it's just one of the most terrible pains that a person could ever feel. So now that we heard that story, uh, I would like to ask you, Bill, about what is the pearls you have used both in the diagnosis and treatment of this problem, and then I'll jump in and, if you don't mind, review some of the basics. Sure. Aaron, uh, we use, uh, it's a pleasure to be here, and uh, this is a very rare disorder, as you mentioned, and so it's critical to select the patients well, especially if you're considering surgical treatment. Uh, we look for a characteristic pain in the throat, the tongue, the tonsil pillar, sometimes in the ear, and it occurs uh, uh, paroxysmally, and it lasts for a few seconds to a few minutes. It may be initially responsive to medical therapy uh, with one of the anti-seizure drugs that we use. Uh, and then we often use a topical anesthetic uh, on the tonsil pillar to see if we can get abrogation of the pain, because I feel that is a very useful uh, tool to determine if somebody really has glossopharyngeal neurology. Thank you, Bill. And if, if we do uh, diagnose them uh, as such, we have no hesitation if they're medically refractory to take them to surgery and proceed with microvascular decompression or nerve root section. Right. So it is an extremely rare disorder. It is so rare that if you see 100 trigeminal neuralgias a year, and that is your specialty to see that many, you only are going to see one out of 100. So most people who have your experience, who or you treat a lot of trigeminal neuralgia, are going to see maybe two or three of these a year. And so the diagnosis is important, and the treatment is also critical because it is really effective if you select the patient correctly. And it most often occurs in the sixth decade of life. It's often misdiagnosed, and we're going to go over the nuances of diagnosis. And first of all, we have to make sure the pain is neuralgic. And the pain, again, mostly in the throat. It shoots sometimes into the ear. The patient history, localization of radiation of pain, the character of the pain in terms of being mostly electrical, the cutaneous triggers are important in terms of swallowing, and the relenting course and response to neuropathic medication often makes the pain to be more neurologic rather than neuropathic. So let's focus on golosopharyngeal neuralgia specifically. It's a pain that originates in the posterior pharynx and tongue and tonsils. And the pain can be often very ear, very much in the ear and otitic. In other words, the otitic component of the pain may be most prominent. 
and the patient may complain mostly 